Let's take a look around Royal Stadium in Kansas City. Just a gorgeous facility. The playing surface is tartan turf. A look down into the left field corner where it's 330. You go out to the alley in left center. 385, 410 out the straightaway center. And a symmetrical ballpark, 385 in the alley to right, 330 down the line. And the Kansas City Royals taking the field. A team managed by a rookie manager, Jim Fry, longtime coach under Earl Weaver at Baltimore. There is Ron Guidry, still throwing, warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Guidry spent some time in the bullpen, of course, in August and early September. And Gura has completed his warm-ups. The rest of the Royals are out on the field. Gura with 18 victories and had all of those by the end of August. So Larry had a difficult September. Couldn't seek number or find number 19. He sought it seven times. And now he goes to the mound here today. So the crowd rising at... Royal Stadium in Kansas City on a summer-like day. Temperature approaching the 90 mark. As we get set for the playing and singing of our national anthem. Let's all enjoy the multi-award winning MCA recording artists, the Old Ridge Boys, with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Our national anthem before a sellout crowd at Kansas City. Ballpark holds about 40,000. Beautiful facility. Many think the finest in the league, opening in 1973. Here's the Yankee lineup today. Willie Randolph, great year. Hit 294, draws a lot of walks. Leads off. The steady shortstop, the veteran Bucky Dent. There's Bob Watson, first year with the Yanks, first time he's ever been in the playoffs. Mr. October on October the 8th. That's fourth. Eric Soderholm is the designated hitter. That's behind Jackson. There's a man who had a terrific season. Rick Cerrone, first year with the Yanks. Lou Pinella, the veteran, is in left field. Aurelio Rodriguez picked up from San Diego in August is the third baseman. And the rookie, Bobby Brown, in center field. Defensively for Kansas City, you've got Willie Aikens in his first year with the Royals. Came over to deal with the Angels at first base. The second baseman doesn't get a whole lot of ink or air time, but you'll all find out about Frank White. Could be the best in the league defensively. A lot of people think so. At shortstop is the man who has taken over for Freddie Potak. There is George Brett, though. Brett is at third. And, of course, what need be said about that man? And UL Washington, who we started to talk about a moment ago, the shortstop filling the shoes very capably of Freddie Potak, who was with California this year. And Brett, of course, at third, the man who could win any election in Kansas City and these parts. Willie Wilson really came into his own this season. They never knew if he could hit. Willie hit 326. Amos Otis has been around a long time. The veteran in center field. And in right field is John Wathen. A very versatile man who can play the outfield. He can also be used at first base and does a lot of catching. And a lot of people thought he would be catching today, but it will be Daryl Porter, who is on the lineup card of Jim Fry, despite the left-hander Gidry going. 
And on the mound, left-hander Larry Gurra, 18 and 10, 2.95 ERA. Jim, for those who haven't seen Gurra, the type of pitcher he is. Well, basically, Al, he's the control pitcher. Uh, I think that's the problem he had in September. His control was off. He has a sneaky fastball, but I think the, the pitch is going to give Kansas City, uh, excuse me, the Yankees, a lot of trouble is the breaking pitch. He's going to have to move the ball in and out, and I think we'll see as the, as the game progresses. If he's on, he's going to be running the Yankees off the plate with his fastball and throwing changeups and curveballs away. So here we go. Game number one, Larry Gura working on Willie Randolph, and the first pitch is a breaking ball. Low and in. One and other count. Steve Palermo working the plate. Joe Brinkman at first. Larry McCoy at second. Bill Haller at third. On the lines, you've got Ken Kaiser in left and George Maloney in right. Randolph takes the strike. One and one. Perfect man, ready, Billy, for the leadoff position. Uh, Willie's a real tough player. I mean, he gets on base a lot. He led the league in walks this year. He's a very aggressive base runner, and uh, he can steal at any time. Although Garrett doesn't have as good a move as a Gidry does. One and one the count. Two and one now. Randolph, obviously with a great eye, Willie drew 119 walks this season. Another, another thing that's very important, Al, is that you have Steve Palermo behind the plate and you have to throw the ball over the plate. He doesn't give you that extra inch or two on the outside corner. Hit in the air to right center field. Otis a long way to go and can't make the catch. Wathen backhands at the edge of the warning track. And Randolph is in the second with a double. Amos Otis looked like he did get a relatively decent jump on the ball and that just couldn't second. get there in time. We'll look at it again. Bucky Hill. It's really not too bad of a pitch, Al. He just that the reason Randolph's so tough is he hits the ball all over the ballpark. And Amos made a nice try, just couldn't get to the ball. So Randolph with a double and there of course the owner of the New York Yankees George Steinbrenner in attendance here in Kansas City the series beginning here and going to New York on Friday the batter is Bucky Dent tries to bunt Randolph along lays down a good one Gura throws the first for the out as Akins remains at the bag to take the throw and Randolph moves to third so one down betting third Billy is that indicative of the way you would manage in the playoffs you try to get one run early or think about the big inning or just what well Al when you have a pitcher like Gidry out there who can uh, win a one run ball game you go after the run the early part of the ball game hey, another thing to look at is that Bob Watson is not a type of guy that's going to strike out very often you get a man at third you got a great chance of scoring he's a good contact man Jim. and all he has to do is hit a ground ball because the infield is back with Randolph at third and one out. Watson, it's a bouncer to third. That's the wrong infielder to hit it to, though, and Brett throws him out. Kansas City back at short and second, but Brett was up at third, and so the runner has to hold. Well, again, Al, you know, they're nervous right now, first inning, and probably a little later on in the series, you'll see him wait for a better pitch and drive. Bob Watson grounding out on the first pitch, and here is Reggie Jackson. First time ever he reached the 300 mark. Tied Ben Ogilvy for the American League lead in home runs with 41. 111 RBIs his month. And I think when you see the center field picture here, Al, you'll notice that again, Charlie Lau's influence has something to do with Reggie's batting stance. He's moved way off the plate. When I first started pitching against Reggie, he was right up on top of the plate. Last year he hit 297, and this year he hit 300. And it didn't cost him power-wise either. One and one, good pitch. Closer examination of the way Reggie plants. Well, Reggie likes to get his arms extended. I, I think the book on Reggie, if you're going to try to get him out, is to, number one, not throw him too many strikes and run the ball in on him. When he gets the ball out over the plate, he can hit the ball a long way. Not throw him too many strikes. That's appropriate after what happened in Baltimore, huh? <laughs> Randolph at third. Two down. Did he check in time? Yes, he did. Two and one. Have the speed gun on Gurr. That was his fastest delivery thus far, 89 miles an hour. with very little success, as you can see, against Gura. 
lifetime. Two under Reggie. Now back and the count is two and two. Larry Gurup, playoff veteran, came over from the Yankees and a deal that sent Fran Healy, now a Yankee broadcaster to New York in 1976. 18 and 10 this year. 74 and 47 lifetime. Two out, first inning, no score. Willie Randolph, the runner at third. The 2-2 two -two to Jackson is fouled away. That looks like he's going right after him. Huh? I would think this would be a very important inning for Larry Gura. Seven not very successful starts in September. Looks like he's, he has confidence in his fastball. He's throwing a lot harder than I see him throwing during the season. Well, that's playoff time. You get a little bit pumped up. Randolph at third. Jackson, by the way, finished the season with a 13-game hitting streak after really struggling in, uh, in September. 2-2 Two -two pitch. It's hit high in the air to left field, down the line. Washington going out. Wilson coming in. It's Willie and foul ground to retire Reggie and the Yankees in the first inning. No runs, a hit. Randolph stranded 90 feet away after a half. It's the Yankees, nothing. And the Royals coming up. Here's the Kansas City lineup. There's Willie Wilson. Tremendous year. Hit 326. UL Washington batting second at shortstop. The great one. George Brett at third. Hal McRae, very fine designated hitter. Wound up batting 297. A.O. they call this man in Kansas City. The versatile John Wathen hit 305. Willie Aiken batting seventh, left-handed batter in the lineup today. And another left-handed hitter, Darrell Porter, the catcher, is hitting eighth. Frank White rounding out the order. The Yankees defensively, the bull, Bob Watson, the steady one, finally getting into the playoffs, first time in his career. Willie Randolph, who doubled in the top of the first inning, is at second. Bucky Dent, dependable at shortstop. And at third base is Aurelio Rodriguez. He'll play today, and Greg Nittles will play tomorrow. In the outfield, you've got Lou Pinella. In left field, in center is Bobby Brown. Of course, Rupert Jones, gone for the year. So Brown taking over there, and Reggie Jackson in right. Back of the plate, Rick Cerrone made a tremendous difference. And Ron Guidry on the mound. Guidry spending couple of weeks in the bullpen to iron out some problems in late August and early September. Had he been in the rotation all the way, it's conceivable he'd have 120. Willie Wilson, switch hitter, batting 326. Owen won the count. And right off the bat, you see Ron Guidry's best pitch. Everybody talks about his fastball, but the pitch that really makes him the pitcher that he is is a slider. And that's the pitch he had trouble with. That's the pitch he went to the bullpen in late August and worked with Clyde King, and apparently it's working very well. 0 oh 2. 94 miles an hour. Billy, what percentage of the time should you throw the slider, would you think? Well, it's a strikeout pitch, like Jim said. He usually throws it to strike the batter out. When he was having trouble about a month ago, he was throwing the slider too soon. It was breaking in dirt about a foot in front of the home plate. Usually it goes right up at your knees, and then it disappears. He's ahead quickly on Wilson. No balls and two strikes. Umpire is looking down toward the uh, gate <laughs> in left field. That's, uh, that's the way we'll get to New York on Friday, guys. <laughs> sure that's not Howard? <laughs> Could very well be. <laughs> of course, Howard's in Philadelphia. Game two in the National League Championship Series. Astros Phillies coming up tonight at 8 Eastern time. One and two the count. Al, I think Willie's a better hitter left-handed. Uh, we've had tougher luck against him when he bats left-handed. He gets such a good jump to first base, and he'll hit weak grounders down there. But what's unusual, Billy, is that he hit so much higher this year right-handed. Uh, he hit 361 right-handed, 304 left-handed. It just doesn't make sense. But because I, from a pitching standpoint, uh, I think, like you said, he's a very tough out from the left side. But it seemed like Mike Flanagan, Scotty McGregor, our left-handers have pretty good success with him. The one two to Wilson, rounded down to Randolph, juggles, recovers, still has time to get him on the sharply hit bouncer. 
One away. UL Washington. The batter. Washington, like Wilson, is a switch hitter. UL from this side of the plate batted 300 this season. Turned him around, he was only 253. There's a little bit more power batting right handed. Left handed, he just kind of slaps the ball. This way, he can hit some extra base hits and occasionally drive the ball and hit a home run. He hit five from the right side and only one the other way this year. One and oh. What's the playoff series without that man? Yogi Berra, Yankee coach. He's wonderful. Oh, <laughs> what pressure, huh? Yogi in it seemingly year after year. One and one. It's funny, some guys just seem to find their way to the playoffs and series every year. As you look at Dick Hauser in his first year as the Yankee manager. And isn't it interesting? Hauser, a rookie. Fry, a rookie. In essence, Dallas Green at Philadelphia, rookie manager. Three of the four teams, and of course, the veteran Bill Verdon rounding out the four amongst the divisional winners. One out, bases empty, no score, bottom of the first in game one. Two and one to count. Billy, how much contact? As we look at Jim Fry, and of course, Jim Palmer is a man who knows Jim Fry in the years and years at Baltimore as a coach. Hauser, the Yankee manager, is the 2 1 pitch is fouled away. How much uh, do you talk with Dick over the year, Bill? Well, Dick and I are very close. You know, he's my third base coach for a couple of years at the Yankees, and uh, I don't get too many chances to talk to him. I went down the field, talked to him today, and he's, he's very confident, he's cool, and he's quite a young man. I think he's going to be one of the great managers in baseball. Gidry's 2 2 pitch is wrapped foul. He told me that if uh, he didn't get a chance to see you when he made his first mistake for you to give him a phone call. I asked him what the number was. <laughs> He's sharp down there, Jimmy. He really is. Well, he did a great job this year. Sure did. UL Washington with a toothpick. Seen that from time. Cliff Johnson, of course. Same thing. Grounded a third. Rodriguez gathers it in and throws him out. So two down now in the first inning. And the crowd responding as George Brett strides to the plate. Made a serious run at becoming the first 400 hitter since 1941. Three, it's incredible that he had that many runs batted in and missed so many games. George with an ankle injury early and then a wrist injury late and still drives in 118. 0 oh and 1. How in the world do you pitch to George Brett? Uh, well, careful, right? Yeah. And keep your fingers crossed. I think what uh, we were talking about yesterday, Billy, you really have to pitch him and defense him one way. I mean, you just don't throw breaking balls and fastballs, and he always seems to find the holes. Uh, I know in open you have probably the best, or at least the fastest outfield in baseball, or at least in the American League. How did you defense him, or did you pitch him one certain way? Well, well, Jim, yes, so what we did was uh, not pitch him in one pattern all the time. Change our patterns every time he came up to the plate. The first time, start him off with a break ball. The second time, go to a different way. And ne never let him get set for one thing. 1-1 one, one pitch. Missing away. If you're wondering about Brett against left-handed pitching, since the Yankees will throw three left-handers in a row, George hit 318 against lefties. He hit 437 <laughs> against righties. Two and two. That's why I'm up here. <laughs> he didn't do that against our righties in Oakland. Yeah, you guys handled them this year. Well, you have a uh, Art Fowler has taught a lot of your pitchers the mystery pitch. That's it in the air to right field. Reggie Jackson coming on and plays it very tentatively, and Brett will seek the extra base. Testing Jackson down the double. So Reggie Jackson had a tough time playing it. Started in very gingerly, played it on a hop, and Brett will do that a lot. Take the extra base. It looks like he lost the ball. I'd have to say he lost the ball in the sun. He didn't pick it up at all because that was a catchable ball. 
Absolutely. Brett with a double to right center. It's funny, it's incredible how many ball for actually get down to October. Remember Dodger Stadium last week? And problems Guerrero had in the outfield. Cincinnati, you've got a problem in left field in October. Here and right. McRae the batter. Fly ball to right center field. Deep but playable as Brown goes back and makes the catch. The assist to Reggie. No runs, one hit. Brett stranded at second. After one, no score. Tonight at 8 Eastern, the Astros try to even up the series against the Phillies in Game 2, live on ABC. Larry Gurra on the mound for Kansas City. I asked his battery mate, Daryl Porter, to describe him. Larry's been, uh, he's been steady like always. Uh, he's got a good fastball, decent fastball, not overpowering by any means, but he spots his fastball real well, and he's got a, a, a very good curveball that he spots also. He's got a decent slider, and he's got a good changeup, and I think the, probably the key is for Larry to keep the ball down and to keep him off balance, to keep him off stride. Darryl Porter summing up Larry Gura, who is ahead on the count 0 1 to Eric Soderholm. He'll be followed by Cerrone and Pinella in the second inning. No score. One hopper to Washington. Over to Akins. One away here in the second inning. Rick Cerrone coming up. Now Michael, Billy Martin, and Jim Palmer. Rick Our Cerrone. coverage of the American League Championship Catcher. Series. Cerrone. A tremendous acquisition, obviously, for the Yankees, Billy. Well, Al, I was in on that before I left the Yankees. Uh, we, kn we knew we needed to catch after we lost the great Thurman Munson, and uh, we went after Cerrone, and it was a, looked like it turned out to be a great deal for the Yankees. I guess so. Mm -hmm. He had a great year. A lot of key hits that early in the season they kept walking, fellas, to get to him. And he kept responding. It's a tough hitter out. It really is. Well, it's a lot easier to hit here with the Yankees than it was in Toronto. He's surrounded by some better hitters. He's going to get better pitches to hit. And I talked to Charlie Lau, and he said he just hits the ball where it's pitched, has home run power, but's willing to walk. I mean, he's not going to swing at too many bad pitches. When he's back home again, too, you know, local boy playing with the Yankees, that's got to lift him up quite a bit. Gura 2 0 with Cerrone. It's a deep left field right down the line and gone. To Rick Cerrone, teeing off on a 2-1 pitch, hitting it right into the corner and hooking around the foul pole. And so the Yankees lead one to nothing here in the second inning. Looked like a high changeup. Uh, two and one, I figure he probably felt the, just the change in speed of the pitch. But it wasn't in a very good spot up around his eyes. So the Yankees are on top in the second inning on the home run by Cerrone. And Lou Pinella, the batter. As you know, he's a good high ball hitter, Jim. When you get a ball up there where he can extend those arms, he's going to drive a long ways. Pinella takes a strike. 0 and 1. Talk to Lou. He's just happy to be here. I think uh, when we had the mini strike in spring training, he was the only player that didn't stay in camp and really didn't get much of a chance to play till late in the season. Lou Pinella, a former Royal, and there is Mrs. Lou Pinella. Most of the Yankee wives are here. Also a former Oriole. There's the man who's the difference in the game right now, Cerrone. Pinella lofting it foul back at first. Al, I think uh, the Yankees know Guerra pretty well. They know that he's a base on ball type of hitter, and you got to make him come up with the ball, make him throw a strike. If you keep going after his pitch, he's going to be successful. All right, you had your troubles, obviously, with Guerra. 
most of the fellas say Billy Martin's the greatest, but not Girl. What happened? Well, I had a tough decision to make. I had to either pitch him or Catfish Hunter, so I took Catfish Hunter instead. This was back in 76. O2 pitch. Hello. You guys have been trading barbs, at least in the papers over the years. How do you get along now? We get along fine. Uh, I think there was a little misunderstanding. Uh, he thought I didn't like him, and that's not true at all. You don't pitch or play a guy whether you like him or dislike him. What's best for the ball club, that's what you try to do. One, two pitch. Inside. Two and two the count. And you know, we managers could be wrong too sometimes. Mm, you weren't wrong very much this year, I know that. Okay. The Oakland A's, one of the big, big stories in baseball this year. Help take us right out of the pennant race. Yeah, I tell you, they make as much improvement next year. We won't have to worry about Billy in the booth. Two two pitches it high in the air to deep left field, right down the line again, and that one's gone. Again, it looked like another high breaking ball. It was. Again, those stats don't prove everything, does it? He's had two home runs all year. Lou Pinella, that's exactly right. Two home runs in the regular season. Well, he said if he had faced me this year, he would have had four. I said four more or just four. It's interesting. The Yankees are a team, obviously, with a lot of power. The Royals, a different sort of ball club. And the Yankee power here in the second inning is Jim Fry goes to the mound. So the Kansas City manager trying to settle Gura down. The Yankees stilling the crowd. 40,000 plus here at KC. Rennie Martin in the Kansas City bullpen. Think about the playoffs, of course. You're up a lot earlier than you are in the regular season down there. And I'll tell you... I tell you also, Al, you really get nervous down here. You really do. Playoffs are really something special. It was a great idea. Splitting the leagues into divisions in 69. As the pitch is hit down the right field corner by Rodriguez. Into the corner. Watson has to scramble for it. And Aurelio winds up at second with a double. So that's three consecutive extra base hits for New York. Nine. That's the way the right-handers have to hit them out. They got to go the other way. If they try to pull them, they hit a weak ground ball. If you go with them, he, he can be hittable. Remember tonight, coming up, game two last night. The big men, Luzinski, Carlton, McGraw. Phillies won at 3-1. Tonight, game two from the vet, 8 Eastern time. Bobby Brown takes inside. Brown, the only Yankee switch hitter. From this side, he hit 212 this season. The other way, he hit 282. Much better high ball hitter from the right side. If Larry keeps making mistakes, that's the one pitch Bobby Brown can handle. One and one. You know, Al, he doesn't like the off-speed breaking ball. If you throw a real slow curve up there, he has a hard time to adjust to it. See a vastly different hitter right-handed as opposed to left-handed? About the same, I think. But like Jim says, has a little more power right-handed, I think. Runs up to Bunt, takes outside. Two and one on Brown. Jim Fry, his charges down early on home runs by Cerrone and Pinella. Two nothing in the second inning. And Brown is the number nine hitter. You've got Randolph on deck. I'm surprised they're not holding Aurelio closer to second. He could steal third base right now if he wanted to. You no, know, the Yankees aren't known for their running game, though, other than possibly Bobby Brown and Willie Randolph. That's it. The one and nine guys. And Rupert Jones, of course, is disabled. Outside of those three, nobody else on the Yankees stole more than two bases this season. I know if he had an Oakland uniform on, he'd be running. Mm. I definitely, I think I have him going right now, Jim. <laughs> it's a good situation for a steal. Well, you have to expect that Gurr is going to throw a strike, too. The control he has. 3-1 pitch is drilled foul. 
And the count is full at three and two. Yankees, the team that led the majors in home runs this season with 189. Garrett taking a lot of time that Porter wants to go to the mound. You know, Al, you're talking about that sun out there. I, even as a player, we always had trouble in October. That sun seems to be a different sun. It's a brighter glare, and, and you just don't pick up the ball as quick as you do normally during the season. We'll see that uh, at Yankee Stadium. But actually, we're there for two night games, and then we've got a possible late afternoon game for game five, four o'clock start. Then you got your shadows, which will come in early in the ball game, and that'll be tough on the hitter and give the advantage towards the pitcher. Won't have to worry about the sun tomorrow. We'll be back here for game two at 8 Eastern time. Little bouncer to the right side. White over to first for the out, and Rodriguez moves up 90 feet. So Aridio is now at third. And with two down, top of the order, Second Willie Randall, who opened the game with a double in the first inning. And this is a tough situation for Gura. Uh, he's obviously struggling. You have one of the better hitters on the Yankee ball club coming up. If you walk him, he could steal second, and you really have a big inning. And if you throw the fastball down the middle of the plate, Willie's going to get his hits. And he's got to worry about also, Willie can drop a butt down or push one and, and drive that run in. Uh, that's Billy Ball, two out butt. One and oh, the count. Yankees leading two nothing, second inning. George Brett retying the shoelace, the reason for the time. Rodriguez, the runner at third with two down. The 1-0 pitch is popped up down the line and left. Washington is calling for it, and UL puts it away. In the inning, they get a couple of runs on home runs by Cerrone and Pinella. Three hits and leave one. After an inning and a half, Yankees two, Royals nothing. Ron Guidry on the mound for the Yankees. He is summed up from Rick Cerrone. Ron Guidry went into the bullpen, came out uh, for four starts and was 4-0. and He's done a super job all year, 17-10, and 10, and people said he had a bad year. He's a super pitcher. He knows how to win. Uh, still got an overpowering fastball and should do a good job for us now. Cerrone, interesting point. People say he has a bad year. Of course, that's the price you pay when you go 25-3 and three one season. It's like with Palmer, too. You win 18, you've had a terrible year, haven't you? I guess so. Oh, I did, though. I, I wasn't that good this year. I'll take all those bad pitchers out of <laughs> Bottom of the second inning. The Yankees leading Kansas City 2 to nothing. Amos Otis leading things off for Kansas City. Our center field camera temporarily out right now as it's fouled away. So feverishly working on that. Get it back in operable order shortly. So bear with us. I think they're going to pitch Otis up in, and then uh, he likes the ball out over the plate. That's where he has drives the ball the best. He really made a point to go to right field this year. I might have to do something with a tendon injury he had in his hand early in the season. Hit right back through the middle. Amos Otis, the leadoff single here in the second inning. That's hard for Gidry to go up in on right handers. He's always had problem doing that. He's better off staying downstairs. That's where he's most effective. Well, I think that base hit was on a slider, and he just got it in the middle of the plate. Otis has on most AstroTurf fields just hit the ball where nobody was playing. I've always had the feeling when I'm pitching that if the games that you pitch well on AstroTurf, you're, you're kind of lucky. The balls are hit at people. I'm not a, not a great lover of AstroTurf. So. Otis at first base and nobody out. John Waffen. Fine season for John, hitting 305. One and 0. 
misses John Watton. And the Sunday crowd at Royal Stadium. And here's another guy that can hit the ball behind the runner to right field as well as anybody. He was rough on us. I mean, he's a tough out. Well, he likes the ball away. The scouting report on him, and to get him out effectively, you have to come up and in. How about Gidry's pickoff move? Well, that wasn't it right then. That's a decoy. He's got a real good one. And he means business. Otis has 16 steals this season. There he goes. He's got a good jump. It's high, and there's no throw. Otis was off and flying. Kansas City's a lot like your ball club where you see just a good jump and Gidry just takes a long time to get rid of the ball. I think if you're going to hold a runner on, you have to do either two things. Keep him from getting a running jump or get rid of the ball as quickly as you can to home plate. Catcher has no chance unless you do that. None whatsoever. Two balls and no strikes now on Wappen. Nobody out. Two-nothing New York. Bottom of the second inning. Three and all. I think what you're seeing, Al, is just like your ball club in Oakland, Billy, this club to win is going to have to run against the Yankees regardless of the score. They've got to scratch it out. They've got to go after them and do everything possible. Three and one the count. Similar to Houston in the National League. They'll single and double and steal you to death. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Otis try to steal third. Maybe wait an out or two. So runners at first and second with nobody out. And Willie Aikens, the batter. All right, Billy, you're a manager. You're down to nothing. First and second, seventh place hitter. Lefty against lefty. Do you lay it down? Well, I think I would to get back in the ball game because he, he doesn't handle left-handers as well as he does right-handers. But, uh, of course, that would be second-guessing now, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's not second-guessing. That's first your opinion guessing. up for, up front. Let's see. Aikens up there to swing away and looks at a strike. But there's another point too, Al. Maybe he can't bunt. There's just some guys that can't bunt, even though the situation calls for a bunt. They just don't know how to bunt. So you let him hit away. I don't think Willie's had a lot of uh, expertise in bunting. He's known for hitting some home runs. He had no sacrifices this season, so that would bear up. And there he is, 0 for 11. In a sense, really, Jim Fry, I guess, playing a hunch here. And starting Aikens. One and one to count. Fry could have gone a couple of different ways with Watson. He has Watson in right, but he's got Cardinal. He could have had Jose in right, perhaps. Well, I think Watson's a, a lot better hitter. Plus, he's got good speed for a big man. Two and one. The point I was making there was if he had Cardinal in right, he could have moved, let's say, Watson into first base, perhaps. But he's opted to keep Aikens in the lineup despite his lack of success against Ron Guidry. Well, Willie's the type of guy that if you make one mistake, the ball ends up in the seats. So he's not a bad guy to have to get you back into a game. Two and one. Slice foul and the count two and two. Definitely from a day-to-day -day standpoint, I would think that you probably would, as they did, go with a, the right-handed lineup against the left-handed pitching. I'm surprised that uh, Dan is playing as much pull against a left-handed power pitcher like this. Lucky pulled over toward the middle. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ball three. Three and two. Gibbers making some good pitches, but as we said before, Steve Palermo makes you throw the ball over the plate. You just don't, there are a lot of umpires where you can throw the ball an inch or two outside where the catcher's sitting, you get a strike, but not today. 3-2 pitch is a check swing foul. I think he's one of the best young umpires in the game today. I'm just really impressed with Palermo, the way he handles himself. 
Well, I don't know about handling himself, but he is one of the best umpires. <laughs> he really has the most ability of any young umpire I've seen come up in the last couple of years. I've heard you and him had some run-ins. Well, if it's not me, it's Earl Weaver, so <laughs> I suppose we're both with the same team. Called strike three. Got the outside corner. So a big out. The first in the second Earl inning. Quarter. Catcher. Here you see the slider. Gidry's strikeout pitch is money pitch. And he can get it over on three and two like you just showed. You know, that's when a pitcher like yourself and all good pitchers in baseball, if they can get that pitch over when they're behind or in a tough situation, they're going to be successful. And also the confidence to throw the pitch in the first place. Darrell Porter at the plate. Oh, and won the count. I talked to Darrell. He did not play against left-handed pitching down the stretch. There were a number of reasons for that, I guess. In the past, he's always hit lefties well, but he's going to be a free agent, and he felt that they didn't want his stats to be maybe as good as they could be. I talked to him also uh, during the season. He was a little down. He, he just felt that uh, he wasn't getting a real good shot, and uh, it's too bad because I think he's a great competitor. Well, it's obviously been a very difficult season for him off the field. He began the year at a rehabilitation center. Alcohol and drug addiction had to overcome those problems, made his way back was named the all-star team. A little half swing foul and the count holds it on two. He's battling up there right now. Well, he's a lot like Willie Akins. They may not hit the good pitch, but if you do make a mistake, they're good enough hitters that they're even if you're right-handed or left-handed, they're going to hurt you. Frank White is on deck. One and two. Last pitch clock at 93 miles an hour. Popped up in the shallow left field. Canella got a late jump, comes in and makes the catch. And hurts himself as Canella really comes up limping. So Louie making a great play in left. But this one may be costly. That was a super catch. Mm. That was really a great play. Well, when you dive on AstroTurf, you don't really slide like you do on grass. And it looked like he probably just jammed his knee. Well, there you it can is. see the tear in yep. his uniform. And again, the Yankees making the big play at the right time. Porter with a little looper out to shallow left field. And so our first defensive gem in the championship series. What a catch. Great play. Well, if you go back to the 78 World Series in the playoffs, Lou Pinnell has been the guy that's made the outstanding play at the right time for the Yankees. And once again, he does it. Hopefully he's not hurt too bad. So Lou Pinnell. Taking care of Darrell Porter, getting the second out in the inning. The Royals trailing 2-0 in the second. Fortunately, Lou getting up and trying to shake it off. It's funny, I, we, we played them a weekend series in New York, and uh, they had a five-game lead. We swept the weekend series, and Lou was very disturbed that he wasn't playing more. He said, if they let me play, I can help them win. And... Towards the end of August and early September, he hit 455 over maybe 20 games. Really helped the Yankees, I guess, ultimately win the pennant. Similar situation with uh, a man he oftentimes platoons with and Bobby Mercer. Not playing very much early. Both of them real, real clutch players now, both of them. Take another look now. Ball hits a very shallow left field. Vanilla going down hard on his knee. But staying in the game, so all Lou will need when they go back to the dugout between innings is a new pair of pants. Well, it can't hurt his speed because he doesn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> two down, two on, Frank White. When you look around the league at number nine hitters, you know you have a pretty good lineup when you've got a white hitting night. We used to pitch him uh, on the first pitch. Don't give him anything inside because he'll try to pull you. We go outside, get a couple of strikes on, then come back inside on. 
Once, once he gets two strikes on him, he leans out over the plate, slaps the ball the other way. All right, let's see what pattern is exhibited by Gidry here. High ball one. He's a tough out for a left-hander. Uh, I think a right-handed pitcher, the, the pitch to get him out with is the slider. I think he probably has the highest strikeout ratio of, of, of almost any uh, Royal batter. One and one. Frank White, a very popular fella here in Kansas City. Mrs. White. The White children. One and one the count. Al, the only graduate of Ewing Kaufman, the owner of Kansas City's ball club, to come out of their academy. That's right. It was a great idea. It's been disbanded. As it gets away from Cerrone, the runner's advancing. Otis taking the turn at third, and the ball winds up in the dugout. So Otis is only given third base. That's all. That is the ruling as we see it again. Gidry bouncing one. And you can see Otis advancing to third as the ball rolls out of play. But that's the ruling. You're given third base and down to second. John Wappen. Not what scored is a wild pitch. Hit in the air to shallow left again. Pinella has to come charging in. And two runs score. The throw to second is too late. So Lou Pinella, who made the brilliant play, has an easier one here, but can't handle it. Lou Pinella, could it be the sun or what? He looked at Bucky Dent. No question about it, Al. It looks like the sun's bothered him, but Dent had a hard time picking up, and Lou lost it right at the end. So Kansas City tying it with two runs here in the second inning. White with a double. And Willie Wilson, 0 for 1. 1 and 0 the count. It almost looked like Lou thought that Bucky was going to catch that ball. It did. But Bucky had to go a long way. Two and all. If you'll always watch the scoreboard during the season, I tell this to our pitchers, after you score two runs or three runs, if you can stop that other team, that next half inning, you usually win the ball game. Here the Yankees score two, Royals come right back with two. Getting a break to do it on the double by White. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. Well, Ron Guidry's really done his best to get Kansas City back in the game. You first of all, he didn't get the leadoff hitter out. Then he walked the second hitter. Then he wild pitched him the second to third. And he didn't get a whole lot of support in the outfield. Three and two. But he's still throwing awfully well. That last pitch at 90 miles an hour. Well, maybe not as quite as good as it looked. Mm. Three two pitch is Found away. You know, Al, I always used to hate to take a pitcher out of the ball game when the opposition's hit loop singles or something off them. If they've hit line drives, you'd say, well, they're hitting them good. But to take him out of there at any time right now would be ridiculous. When I checked this year's figures, you hated to take a pitcher out ever. <laughs> oh, really? 3-2 <laughs> pitch. Foul away again. Open A's setting several marks this year, of course, for a complete game. Well, my pitching coach falls in love with his pitchers, and he won't allow me to go out there and take him out. 
Is it true there'll be no bullpen at all next year physically in Oakland? <laughs> Put seats out there. Three two bid. Bounce the third. Nice backhand pickup by Rodriguez to throw him out and probably save a run. In the inning, though, the Royals get even. Two runs, two hits, leave one. Go to the third in game one. Yankees two, Royals two. Saturday in the Cotton Bowl, the Oklahoma Sooners, who scored 82 points last weekend, tackle the undefeated Texas Longhorns. Jim Fry, manager of the Royals. I spoke with him yesterday. Jim, you've got Gura game one, Leonard game two, split off game three. How did you determine the rotation for this series? Well, in terms of the uh, the first pitcher, I picked Gura because he has had very good success against the Yankees. He's 3-0 this year. He's 7-1 lifetime. And I just felt like I was going to go that way, especially if you have to come back with a fifth game starter. Having the left-hander in Yankee Stadium, I felt, and the fact that Gura has done so well against him was an advantage. Jim Fry could have gone several different ways, as could uh, Dick Hauser in his rotation selection. Hit in the air to center. Otis with the glasses down puts it away, and Dent is gone. So Bucky flies out to begin the third inning. One away, and Bob watching the batter. I started to mention before, it's interesting the way some guys always seem to wind up in October play and others like this man who's had a fine career, many years of course with Houston, last year with the Red Sox. First time ever for Watson, first time ever for Bobby Mercer. You know, Al, uh, there's a lot of players that never played in the World Series that were great players. It's a shame. It's incredible. And yet others who uh, were ordinary players and uh, have been in six or seven. Did you ever play in a World Series game, Bill? <laughs> yeah, a couple of them. Watson hits it in the air to right field. Watson coming on, but he's going to play it conservatively, and the extra base will be taken by Watson as the bull pulls in at second. So it's very difficult in the outfield, obviously. It is extremely right apparent here Jackson. as Watson plays it very conservatively. Again, it's uh, the same problem Reggie had out there. It looks like that sun's bothering everybody out there. Well, on the turf, you don't want the ball to bounce over your head, but you also, when you play and lay back on the ball, you give the guy two bases. I wonder if they have sunglasses on. I know that they had a problem in, uh, the other day in Los Angeles, uh, or, or Phil, uh, Maddox for Philadelphia didn't have his sunglasses out there. Reggie Jackson fouled out in the first inning. Oh. And the glasses worn by Wathen. All you have to do, of course, is flip him down. Otis with the same prescription. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and in left field, there's Wilson. Jackson, it's a bouncing ball down a second. White throws him out. And Watson goes to third. I think Wilson's keeping his glasses down all the time, isn't he? We'll check him out in left field. As Eric Sonnerholm comes up for the Yankees. Martin again in the bullpen for Kansas City. Second time he's been throwing. Sonnerholm rounding out in the second inning. One, one runner at third Bob Watson two out top of the third game one of the American League Championship Series the Yankees and the Royals locked up 2 2 one and one it's interesting to, to notice Al that Eric Soderholm is one of the strongest men in baseball and the last time they pitched him in and Gurr has changed his pattern, started him off with a breaking ball, now seems to be moving the fastball away. He's the type of hitter you can't stay in any one pattern. Hit in the air to right field. Let's see if this will be an adventure. Waffen is there and makes the catch, and the inning is over. So the Yankees ran the go-ahead run 90 feet from the plate. We played two and a half. Still, Yanks two, Royals two. 
Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, a special assignment, Future Wars, fighting on the electronic battlefield. ABC News examines technological breakthroughs and sophisticated it's weapons that will affect all of our futures and the security Washington. of our country. Plus all the news of the day on ABC's World News Tonight. Al Michaels with Billy Martin and Jim Palmer in Kansas City as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Yankees 2, Royals 2, UL Washington, George Brett and Hal McRae facing Ron Guidry. Washington bounced to Rodriguez, his first trip. One and oh. Jeff Weiner, report the fan accommodations, please. Two and oh. Jim Fry took over, of course, for that fella, Whitey Herzog. Looking on today, now, of course, in the Cardinal front office, managed the Cardinals for a while this year. And the man who guided the Royals to the divisional title in 76, 77, and 78. Three and oh. I bet he's gonna miss that managing one. Well, what do you think? You think he'll uh, be back or what? No, I don't think so, but uh, it's a great loss for the game of baseball because he was a real good manager. Herzog, desirous of a front office spot, and that's what he's got in St. Louis. Ball four. So Washington walks. That's the second walk given up by Ron Guidry. The third baseman. And George, George Brett is Brett. the batter. I should be talking to Whitey the next couple of days about some future trades. Think so? Oh, all right. We've got a scoop now, huh? What are you looking for? Well, we need some help, a little bit of help, and uh, they need some, something that we have, so I think we get, we'll be able to talk and make some deals. We're going to hear it here first? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Brett with a double in the first inning. Brett hit 425 against the Yankees this season and drove in 22 runs in 10 games. And the back of the batter's box being defined there by the plate umpire, Steve Palermo. No wonder he hit 390. He was cheating. <laughs> Token throw. George Brett's mom. Of course, she's got uh, two kids playing with Kansas City. Brother Kent, the pitcher, also on the team. Yankee bullpen. Active right now. Davis throwing. And the throw down a second nails him. There's that good move. Yep. So UL Washington is erased. Another look as Watson throwing down a dent to nail him 136. I don't think Jimmy Fry is very happy about that with George Brett. You lead, walk the leadoff man, you have George Brett coming up exactly the situation you want, and then the guy gets picked off. Here's the move again now. And he's out easily at second as Brett swings and misses in the count one and one. You know, that will disturb the manager once in a while when that happens. <laughs> well, Kansas City, when they steal bases, not only do they have exceptional speed, they will go on a, a specific pitch, and if you don't throw over there, they're going to steal the base. A lot of times, they'll try to beat the throw. Even if you throw to first, if you don't make a strong throw, they're going to try to beat the ball to second base. Gidry threw the ball with something on it, and they threw him out at second. Two and two. Gidry picked off five runners this year. Actually, it's a caught stealing in that case because the runner was thrown out at second. That's the way it officially goes in. But Ron, with his move, was able to erase five runners this year. Well, he's improved his move. He did not have a good one. Two balls, two strikes to count. And Gidry now full with credit. Three and two. So the Yankee bullpen, Davis and Underwood, throwing back of Gidry. 3-2 to Brett is high, and so George is on. 
This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WABC TV, New York. Al McRae flied out in the first inning. Guidry's last pitch, clocked at 94 miles an hour. He's wild high right now, Al. He's, he's thrown too hard, and when he pitches up, uh, that's when he's going to get hurt, and that's when he gets his base on balls. And though, though he's trying to pitch Brett up in, you can see, but still, he's got to keep the ball down to be effective. Coming up tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time, game two from the vet in Philadelphia, the Astros and the Phillies. Phillies winning last night, 3-1. to one. Greg Luzinski, two-run homer. Two and all. Oh. Al McRae, he can hurt you with a long ball. Homered in each of the last three games of the season. Hit 433 against the Yankees this year. Two and one. McRae's one of those fellows who's found gold. Of course, he started with the Reds and was in two playoffs and two World Series there. And now in his fourth at KC. Well, the DH rules really helped him out. McRae, when he was in the National League, played the outfield. He initially was a second baseman. He played against us in 1970. He an outstanding hitter in the, in the 70 World Series. 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed, and the count 2-2. Two and two. He can do a lot of things with the bat. He can hit the ball the other way. Like you said, he has home run power. I don't know, Billy, what you would do, but uh, Gidry's been struggling. Would you have him hit and run here? Maybe send Brett? Well, Brett can run, and uh, this is a contact hitter up there. You can do that, Jim, without any problem. So we'll watch George with a count two and two. He doesn't go, and McRae strikes out. Ron's a little hurry there. Yep. <laughs> the center fielder, Amos Otis. Another look now as he takes care of McRae. And again, there's the slider, the strikeout pitch. Gidry has now struck out two, and Amos Otis. The batter, Gidry, no complete games in his last eight starts, coming out of the bullpen in September. Of course, when you've got Goose Gossage down there, no need to keep your starters in very long, huh? No, I, if I had him, I think I'd have used him quite a bit, Yeah, too, I have that. a feeling. <laughs> I think also, playoffs are a lot different than regular season game, where Gidry pitches six, seven strong innings. That's that's all Dick Hauser wants out of him. I think the fact that he went off the field thinking there were three three outs I mean, it just shows that he's not really has his acute con concentration. He's just uh, all over the place. He's throwing low sliders, high fastballs. He's really not on right now. He's throwing the ball awfully hard, but he doesn't have his control. One and no, the count on Otis. Two out, bottom of the third. We're tied 2-2. corner away from Panella and bouncing into the seats for a double and that is a tough break for Kansas City because they would have taken the lead so Brett has to go back to third and the Royals will have runners at second and third with a score tied instead of a 3-2 advantage it definitely was a bad break for Kansas City that they would have scored one run and you don't know where the ball is going to kick off their wall what it would have done maybe uh, Amos might have had it inside the park shot you never know Amos Otis's wife, her man is now two for two with a single and a double. Jim Fry, I wonder if he's disputing the, the call down there. 
Well, I think the ruling is if, if a fan leans over and touches yeah. the ball, it's the umpire's judgment whether the player would have scored. Maybe he's disputing the fact whether the ball bounced into the stands or it was touched by that, a spectator. Yeah, yeah. That be, I could imagine anything else. Well, he probably felt that the interference... I don't think there was any question. It looked like it bounced in. I don't think anybody reached that. Here it is again. That wall, by the way, is 12 feet high. Well... It was in. It yeah, was it was in. in there, sure. The man was cradling it. And also we're in Kansas City. <laughs> it's a tough argument to win, isn't it? Well, Jimmy used to... <laughs> He sold used cars, sold real estate, <laughs> and he sold life insurance. So I'm sure he's trying to talk Ken Kaiser into something out there. <laughs> there it is. Now we can see it from a different angle. And right you can tell that, uh, there's really, really nothing to argue about. But as Jim said, he's trying to make a sale. <laughs> Runners at second and third now with John Watton. Drew a walk in the second inning, came in to score. And they're going to put him and on now. put him on. And go to work on Aikens, the left-handed batter. So this will load them up in the third inning. Put the pressure on Willie Aikens, who struck out in the second inning. Took a call third strike. Down to first goes John Watton. The bases are loaded with Brett at third. The first base Otis at second. Aiken. Watton at first. And here's Aiken. During the regular season, Kansas City won 8 out of 12. One and all. Sarone keeping the score tied with a nice play. Here it is. Well, again, now, uh, Ron's got to be very careful with that slider downstairs because they could get away from the catcher. Get that one up and away, and the count of two balls and no strikes. The shadow line now nearing home plate. A strike and the count two and one. You can see that Aikens, his feet are in the shade. His upper body is in the sunlight. Three and one the count. Aikens, that shadow line right out in front of the plate. So it'll inch further and further toward the mound. I think I put the take side on right now, Al. Three and one, you would, huh? I think so. Right. I think I'd try to throw it down the middle as hard as I could. Aiken swings away, hits it in the left field for a base hit. Brett comes in to score. The throw is cut off by Dent. Two runs score. No play anywhere. 4 2 Royals. Pitch going the other way with it. No fastball. Just bites it off the left field. He's awfully strong. Kansas City battling from behind and now leading four to two. And Darrell Porter is the batter. And Gidry is fortunate that he was able to pick Washington off. That's one of the two outs in the inning. Chopper, Randolph has it, throws the first, and the inning is over. But for the Royals, a couple of runs, a couple of hits, and a couple of men left on. We've played three in game one at KC, Royals four, Yankees two. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, the Yankees and Royals, game two of the American League Championship Series. Rick Cerrone hit a home run in the second inning. He'll lead off in the fourth. I visited with Rick yesterday. Rick, think back now and, and assess your performance individually, how you felt about your performance during the 1980 season. Well, it was satisfying because uh, in spring training, I wanted, I set one goal, 
and that was to play 140 ball games. And I reached that by playing 147. I felt that if I did that, uh, I would look back and say I had a pretty good year because uh, playing for the Yankees, they don't play if you're not doing the job. And we were doing the job. The team was, you know, had a phenomenal year. 103 wins. Just being a part of it's been exciting. Zerone hits one to right field and deep and into the corner, but Wathen is equal to the task for the out. So Zerone bidding for his second home run. Going the other way this time. His home run wrapped around the foul pole and left. It's one to the opposite angle. The left fielder, Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella. Lou hit a home run in the second inning. Alan Roth, by the way, went back, checked it all out. First time ever in championship series play, either league, that we've had back-to-back -back home runs in a game. That's just unusual in this park. It's a huge ballpark. Tough to hit back-to-back -back home runs. And both of them are going right down the line. Outlet uh, argument uh, Fry gave out there was because he thought that the umpire signaled uh, that the fan had touched the ball. That's the reason why he ran out there. So he was misled by the initial call. 2-0. Oh. Good thing about the playoffs, of course, is you have foul line umpires. Ken Kaiser, the umpire, and left, so he's a lot closer than the umpire would be in the regular season from third base. And he's a good umpire. He's a very good umpire. 2-0 pitch is low, ball three. There's Kaiser. Well, so far, Billy, you've told us uh, how good Palermo is and how good Kaiser is. Huh. Thinking about 81 already, aren't I you? I love them all. I love them all. <laughs> yeah, the season's over. <laughs> <laughs> Up here, they look beautiful. <laughs> they got a tough job. Yes, they do. No doubt. Yes, they do. With managers like you and Earl and some of the other guys. Actually, I like them. Uh, the I, I get along really well with them. Uh, we'll have our arguments out there, but they, we don't carry it over the next day. <laughs> well, you just saw Pinella walk. You were, you were thinking about carrying it over earlier, though, this year. Yes, but I thought twice about that. Here's Rodriguez. Doubling in the second inning. One and all. Well, really, of course, had many fine seasons with Detroit. Initially came up with the Angels back in the late 60s. Then he went to San Diego, and of course they had the house cleaning with the Padres in August, and the Yankees picked them up when Nettles contracted hepatitis, and Aurelio took over at third. Excellent fielder. He hit three crucial home runs for him, game winners. It just seems like every time he gets a hit, you remember it. I had Aurelio at uh, Detroit, and uh, he played tremendous for me over there. And he's got great power. Surprising for a small man. Well, yeah. he's what I would call a free swinger. He'll swing at any pitch. Uh, two and zero. Oh, you know he's going to swing at the ball if it's close. Get in the air to center field. Otis going back and makes the catch for the out. So two down in the fourth inning with Manila back at first base. And Bobby Brown, the batter. Bobby Brown grounding out in the second inning, 0 for 1. Man who spent a long time in the minor leagues, got shuffled around, finally gets a chance in the bigs. He was and another former Oriole. He started right? his career with the Orioles. Not at the major league level. Out. Bobby Brown, who was initially signed by the Orioles in 72, released, signed by the Phillies, traded to the Yankees, drafted then by the Mets, released, signed by Toronto, reacquired by the Yankees on waivers. He had a real great year at uh, Rochester under Gene Michaels, and Michaels recommended him very highly to George Steinbrenner, and uh, he's done quite a job for him. He has because Rupert Jones, of course, was in center field. As you look at Fennell at first base, Rupert lost a decision to the wall out in Oakland in late August. I really felt that's when we were going to win the pennant when he got mm -hmm. hurt. 
Game around, one and two. That's when the Orioles were really making their charge, Jim. Well, we were a half a game back, and uh, Rupert's outstanding defensive player. There's a low curveball that he swings at. Like you said, Billy, he has trouble with a breaking ball. And they lose Jones for the year, and Bobby Brown comes along, gets some big hits, plays defense fairly well. He's not a Rupert Jones in center field. And he's got power. He can hit a couple two, three run home runs for you. One, two pitch is bound straight back. Royals four, Yankees two. Fourth inning. Game one. It's got to be tough up there right now, Al, to see uh, with that shadows out there. It's got to be tough. There you can see it, the perspective shot. Brown in the shade. Pitcher in the background in the sun. Fouled away. One, a lot of theories on a situation like this. Uh, is it tougher to hit against a guy like Gidry or somebody like, let's say like Tommy John who changes speeds a lot? Well, we played the last couple games in Cleveland, which has the worst uh, shadow problem. And they say the ball leaves the hand white and comes in. You never really see it. It's, all you see is kind of a, a gray blur. Very difficult for the hitter. I think they have trouble more on the breaking ball when the shadow's out there. That's what Pete Rose always used to contend in a twilight game. He'd say that uh, he would rather face uh, Nolan Ryan in the twilight than somebody would mix him up. Fry again, going to the mound. That's the second visit now. Larry Gura, two and two here on Brown. Remember, tomorrow night, the Yankees and the Royals. Dennis Leonard will be on the mound for Kansas City. Their 20-game winner tomorrow. The Yankees will counter with Rudy May, who had a great year, led an ERA. That's tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern time. National League is off tomorrow. When we go into New York for game three on Friday, as you look at Pinella at first base, Tommy John gets the start against Paul Splitora. Inside, ball three. Full count, three and two on Brown. I think Tommy was very disappointed he wasn't pitching one of the two games here. Absolutely. And the reason was the Yankees did a computer breakdown on John on AstroTurf and figured they'd rather have him pitch on grass. Hit in the air to center field. Amos Otis ready to corral it. And that's that. Fourth inning, no runs, no hits, leave one. We've gone through three and a half in Kansas City, Royals four, Yankees two. I'm not surprised this move right here, Al. I, I believe that uh, Ron is not as sharp as he has been in the past, and uh, they decided that uh, just get him out of there now and bring him back. He'll be strong the next time he goes out there. So interestingly enough, they go with Gidry in game one, and Ron Gidry lasts only three innings as Ron Davis comes out of the bullpen to go to work on Kansas City in the bottom of the fourth inning. I mentioned the, the reason that Tommy John was not considered as the starter in game number one. We'll detail that on Friday in our pregame show. Look into the Yankee bullpen. And of course, the big man in the bullpen is the goose sitting right there. Rich Gossage, 33 saves. Of course, it's too Getting early for the goose Kansas here. City, the so Davis comes out of the pen 20. in the fourth. Tried to get Davis earlier this year in the trade, but uh, George wouldn't turn him loose. But I think this guy can really pitch. He's got a great arm. Sinker slider pitcher. Throws hard. He should be tough on this book. Nine and three with seven saves. Frank White to lead off in the fourth inning. One and oh the count. You'll see his fastball really run in towards the right-handers. Won 14 games last year for him. Did a great job. One and one. Picked up nine wins, seven saves this year. White questioning that call. Frank with a two-run double in the second inning on the looper that dropped in in front of Pinella to tie the game. Royals ahead 4-2, bottom of the fourth. Bowed straight back toward us and upstairs. Huh. You guys are ducking like <laughs> I'm going to get it, huh? Come on, Billy. That's why we got you. Now. <laughs> I left my glove home. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I remember 1953. I was, <laughs> I was young, but I was. <laughs> Billy only, he only makes the tough plays, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, 
One two pitch. White lines it to left field. Pinella coming on. The plays it on a hop. And Frank is two for two. I would probably see a steal in this situation. Uh, Davis doesn't have the best move in the world over there at first base, and uh, Frank's got a got good speed, gets a good jump. So Willie Wilson, the top of the order, 0 for two. Wilson coming up for the first time left-handed. White this season has stolen 19 bases in 25 attempts. Outside as he runs up to Bud. One and oh, the Royals love to run. Led the league in steals with 186. This ball is way outside. That was Watch no the pitch ball out. run. No. I think they'll wait one out. I would like to. I know if, if I was managing, I'd like to take advantage of the hole. Plus, you got a fellow up there. It's hard to double up. Oh. <laughs> He's going to have to hit it right at Randolph. Or Bucky Dennett short. One ball and one strike. There he goes. Little chopper fouled away. One and two. So Frank White was moving on the pitch. There again, Al, you had the shortstop covered second base. If he hits any kind of a weak grounder on that on that side of the infield, it would have been first and third situation. And then after the next pitch, it would have been second and third. Mm -hmm. Yep. He had stolen. <laughs> well, when a guy gets 230 hits, you're not afraid to hit and run with him by any means. Struck him out. So Wilson down on strikes and Willie is now over three. Ron Davis getting a big out. 92 miles an hour clocking on that last pitch by Davis. Too shabby. Hmm. Well, I think Dick Hauser realized how badly uh, Ron Gidry was throwing. He didn't have any control with his fastball or a slider and he's at a point where he really has to keep his club in the game. U.L. Washington, the batter. Fouled away. 0 and 1. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. There's the scoring summary. Sorona Pinella back to back homers. KC ties it. Bottom of the second. Then in the third, Willie Akins. A base hit to drive in two. U.L. Washington at the plate. Owen won the count. One and one the count. UL at the plate and misses Washington in the stands. Quite composed. Royals leading it four to two with White at first base and one down. Not an exceptionally big lead. Not even out on the turf. And they pitch out. You know, Al, we practice that in spring training with the catcher and the pitcher. Every fifth pitch is a pitch out, so they get used to throwing it. Do you come back with another one? Not in this situation necessarily, but do you like them back to back? I do. Hmm. There he goes. The pitch is a strike. The throw down a second is offline. And White in its second. That's something you see so often. The pitch out doesn't go. Next pitch goes. Well, a lot of times if the runner's on his own, he's going to show you that he can make it. And then usually if it comes from the sign from the manager, the manager, his ego gets up too. And he says, well, I'm going to show him a steal mm -hmm. now. So Frank White in scoring position with one out. Two and two the count on Washington. And on deck is Brett. Hit to the left side and by Rodriguez. White had to hold, so he'll stop at third as Pinella runs it back in. Rodriguez was eaten up by that one. Runners at first and third with George Brett coming to the plate. 
There's that artificial turf for you. Sure. Rubio's not used to it. Third baseman, George Brick. Rodriguez angling over toward his left and backing up a bit. And so runners at first and third and Brett the batter. Brett not only leading the league in hitting this year, but also in slugging percentage. Fouled away. Yankee infield at double play depth. Here's another question for you, Billy. Do you think they're going to run now? If they run that leaves first base open, there's a possibility they may put Brett on and pitch to McRae. I would run now, Jim, because I'd want that hole for Brett to hit through over there. No, I would. The 0 1 to George is outside. One and one. I would send the runner out a little later on in the count, like uh, two strikes, two balls, where you want to keep out of the double play, then I'd send the runner, but I wouldn't do right now where he has a shot to hit that hole. We saw White at third, and that was Washington at first. One and one. Two and one the count. How did you pitch George in Oakland this year? You had a lot of success with him. I know he hit over 400 against the Orioles. He hit 233 against us. We we changed our pattern on him. We never pitched him one way because he's he's too smart of a hitter. He'll just and really hurt you. Chopper foul. I'll tell you, you throw out that 233 against Oakland, and Brett winds up the year hitting 406. Any of your pitchers have particular success against uh, Brett? Uh, all of them did. All of them. Actually, all of them did. When you hit 233. Mm. Of course, you got to give a lot of credit to our outfitters, too. They ran down some line drives. Henderson, Murphy, and Armis. There's something. 2-2 two -two pitch is hit in the air to left field, curling into the corner, and it is foul. Just foul. And that would have scored two. <laughs> Play on I Love New York, huh? It says it all. It seems to me, Billy, they're they're pitching them away and not really playing them that far around left field. Well, I think that uh, George has hurt them inside. He's going downtown a about three or four times against the Yankees, and uh, he's hurt them with a long ball, so they look like they are pitching them away, Jim. I think if I was Lou Pinnell, I'd be over a couple of steps and left, because he can really drive the ball left field. If you're going to pitch in that way, you got to play in the same way. Two balls, two strikes, one out, two on, 4-2 Royals, fourth inning. Grounded to Randall, the dent one, back to first, in time for a big double play. Washington went in hard, and Bucky got the throw over anyway. See it again, a big play. Starts out like a tailor-made double play. And then Dan has to fight off Washington to get him. They don't score in the fourth. We go to the fifth still. Royals four, Yankees two. And I believe during the inning break, it was announced that the back-to-back -back home runs by Cerrone and Panella, while being the first in the American League championships, were not the first in championship series play. They made the announcement when they hit them that they, it was the first time back-to-back -back homers had been hit in championship series play. But I believe a correction was made. We're waiting right now for shortstop UL Washington to get on the field. The Yankees will have the top of the batting order. Randolph, Dead, and Watson. Willie has doubled and popped up. Royals four runs on seven hits. The Yankees two runs on five hits. Play umpire Steve Palermo. Holding time. Not for us certainly. Waiting for groundskeeper, groundskeeper George Toma to come out with something. And Randolph discovers doesn't have enough pine tar on the bat handle. 
No, it's amazing. Now they'll stop a ball player from going back, picking up a little pine tar to try to apply the tools of his trade a little bit better. But they'll also allow the game to be orchestrated. I know what you mean. And again, we say not for us. The pitch to Randolph now as we are ready for action. Strike one. Gora has been on the ropes, but he's still pitching. And Gidry is gone. And a breaking ball over. Strike two. I think Willie thought that pitch was outside. Once again, we mentioned the pitcher coming out of the bright sunshine, pitching into the shadows, and you've really got to be careful with the bat. You can't take anything close, especially with two strikes on it. Umpire has just as tough a time seeing that ball as a batter. That's strike three. Randolph on three pitches is called out. That plate's about 25 inches now. But you've got to realize that. That is the first strikeout for Larry Gora. He'll work now to Bucky Dent. The Royals lead four to two here in the fifth inning. Dent sacrificed Randolph to third in the first inning after Randolph had doubled. Bucky fly to center in the third. Strike one. Beauty and the Beast. Strike two. Well, Herr had been uh, having a bit of problem through the first throw four, but now it looks like he's got his stuff and his control back. Times you let a guy off the ropes, you never get him again. On the ground and through, base hit for Dent. Wilson gets the ball in to second base, and Dent is on. That is base hit number six for the Yankees. And their first single. First five hits have been three doubles and a pair of homers. Bob Watson with Randolph at third in the first inning. Watson brought it out. In the third, Bob doubled to right field when Watson let the ball fall in front of him, and Watson ran a single into a double. A ball. That at first. Off speed pitch. Two balls and no strikes. The Yankees scored in the second on back to back home runs by Cerrone and Panella. Popped it up in a shallow center. Otis coming in. Two out. The right fielder, Reggie Hatfield. Now Gora will pitch to Reggie Jackson. Twice in the game with men in scoring position. Jackson has made out. He flied out in the first, grounded out in the third. And here's that pitch again. Hero will throw Jackson a lot of sliders. He's that ball running away from Jackson. He swung under it. He throws Jackson a fastball. It'll be up and in and probably out of the strike zone just to move him off the plate as he likes to throw Jackson the slider, keep the ball away, and change speeds away. This might be able to change his speed away here. Time to start flipping those fingers. It's usually uh, something that isn't fast. Curve ball, change up. They went back away from that sign, though. Way away from him, but with some mustard on it. One ball, one strike. Two outs, a runner at first. The Yankees trail by two runs in the ballgame. Bucky Dent 
at first base. Akins holding him on. Another one way away from Jackson. Two balls and a strike. Gura has walked one and struck out one. But girl, he will he won't give in, Frank. As we look at Aikens now playing behind Den at first base, he, he won't give in. He'll keep uh, giving you that junk, the slider, the slider. He won't throw anything uh, over the middle of the plate. He uses the corners. And when you hit, you've got to realize that. You can't say, well, he's behind the count. I'm going to get a fastball right here because he's not going to give it to you. One reason, Gore won 18 games this year, but I'm surprised he went into that late season slump. Three and two count now on Jackson. So Dent will be running with two outs. Spira does his best pitch, pitching against a team like the Yankees with three swingers. Guys who wait on the ball and hit the ball where it's pitched, they give him a lot of trouble. Burr shook off one side. Dent is ready to go. And Jackson has requested time. Then goes and Jackson is called out on strike. No runs, a base hit, and a man left in the middle of the fifth inning. It's Kansas City four, the New York Yankees two. Well, some VIPs have just been introduced to the fans here at Royal Stadium. Baseball Commissioner Bui Kuhn here for the ball game, and also American League President Lee McPhail. And the turnstiles counted 42,598. That's the paid attendance for this afternoon's first championship series game in the American League. Seating capacity at Royal Stadium listed as 40,628. And today's paid attendance, 42,598. Al McRae, the designated hitter and cleanup hitter for the Royals. Will be followed by Amos Otis and John Watson as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. McRae has flied out and struck out. He's facing Davis for the first time. Foul back. McRae, a good opposite field hitter. One time they tried to make a pull hitter out of McRae to add some more power. A successful hitter. I never understood why they try to change him. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Well, that's what they're uh, trying to do with Al Cowens at Detroit now, trying to make him a home hitter. I don't know that much about baseball, but I have to disagree. Well, it's hard to change a guy's habits after he's been around the big league seven or eight years. In fact, after he's gone through the minor leagues, I think. It's got to be a natural transition, something that can't be taught. Foul back. Oh, right here, then Collins hit what? 24 home runs, I believe, one year. The on deck batter is Amos Otis, who is two for two. A ball and two strikes on McCray. Just outside. In just a few moments, as the sun goes down a little bit more, the hitter is going to be in sunshine again for just a little while as it comes through the stands. Foul back. Two ball, two strike count on McCray. Ron Gidry pitched the first three, allowed the four runs on five hits. Davis gave up two hits, but got out of trouble in the fourth inning when the Yankees turned a double play for him. Struck him out. Well, 
The second strikeout for Davis. And the second time McCray has struck out. Amos Otis opened the second inning with a single, stole second, went to third on a wild pitch, and both he and Wathen scored on a double by Frank White. And the third inning, Otis doubled and came in to score another run. I don't think he'll be as aggressive here against Ron Davis. There are certain right handers that Otis does not like to swing on, and he'll stay back. He won't go and get the ball. All the way. But against left handers, just about every left hander, he'll be more aggressive. He doesn't have he doesn't worry about the ball being in on him. He'll go and hit it. But he's a little more defensive against uh, right handed pitching. In fact, <laughs> there was rumor that they had certain right handers that Otis uh, didn't have to play against. A guy like Palmer, Gossage. Powell is out of play. Oh, you just mentioned two right handers. I wouldn't want to hit against them. You got to hit against everybody once you put that major league yeah. uniform on. Of course, it's a little bit different now. <laughs> no ball, two strike count on Otis. And Davis works it just outside one and two. He hangs back Frank. He won't go that pitch on the outside corner. Against right handers during the season the Royals won 56 lost 38 against left handers 41 and 27. One two count one out nobody on. That is slicing foul out of play. No chance for Jackson. Game number two tomorrow will be a night game. We'll be on at 8 o'clock New York time. Right center. Jackson is there. And there are two out. Earlier in the game, Jackson and Brown got a little crossed up on a ball hit in that territory, but it was caught by Bobby Brown. Two outs, and John Wathen has walked twice, scored once. Blowing in. The Royals lead four to two here in the bottom half of the fifth. Two balls and no strikes. The Yankees set up to the opposite field for Wathen. And that got the inside corner. Set the defense to the right side and still pitch him in. Almost hit him. Yogi Berra, among the others, there in the corner of the Yankee dugout. Coach Clyde King, Coach Jeff Torborg. Yogi standing. King on the top step. Torborg kneeling next to King. And Wathen almost hit again and is on. <laughs> Wathen walks for the third time. You don't like this guy up there with a right handed pitcher. Right handed low ball pitcher, sinker ball pitcher, Ron Gidry. And Akins likes to lift that low pitch, especially against right handers. Against Gidry, Akins struck out and singled to left field. His single to left drove in two runs. Lee McPhail. It's Joe Cronin. And Joe Cronin. Former president of the American League, Hall of Famer. Say it was a great shortstop, the old Washington Senators. 
Strike one. Sometimes you like to see some of the old timers play. I think it's one thing the modern player misses. Sort of prepare, look, watch the old timers play a little baseball. I would have liked to have seen Babe Ruth, Lou Gary. Oh, I would too. I would like to have seen DiMaggio. Not that he was before my time, but I was never in the area. Well, I saw Joe play. Great player. Did everything effortlessly. Good hitter. Great outfielder. Good base runner. He did everything you had to do to be a, a, a great baseball player. The great baseball player that he was. Right back to Davis. He didn't know he had it. And he throws Aikens out. No runs, no hits, a walk and a man left. We've completed five. The score, Kansas City four, New York two. Well, the Yankees will come to bat in the sixth inning. Eric Sutter home, Rick Cerrone, and Lou Pinella will be up against left-hander Larry Gora. The grounds crew under head groundskeeper George Toma came out after the fifth inning. Redid the chalk lines on the dirt part of the infield, that is around the sliding bits of the uh, first base and third base and around home plate. They've really beautified this ballpark, not that it needed beautifying, for this championship series. Sutter home has grounded out to short and fly to right field. Strike one. Now, Gura's been getting ahead of the Yankees lately. Last time he was in trouble was back in the third inning. Inside. Gura pitches as if there were no effort at all to it. The ball's in a strike. I think part of the key offensively, at least, to beating the Royals, Frank, you got to get in that bullpen. Uh, Quisenberry is about their only stopper, and you'd like to get him out there as quickly as you can, as early in a ball game, and as often as you can in a best of uh, five series. Three balls and a strike now on Sutter Hall. Gora has gotten tougher as the game progressed. Deep in the hole and off the glove of UL Washington, Sutterholm is on. So a leadoff single for Sutterholm will be the Yankees' seventh hit of the game. And we'll watch it again. Here's Washington moving it to his right in the hole. Off the heel of the glove and bounced up. Even had he fielded that ball. He might have gotten Sauter home. Sauter home really doesn't run that well. But I think what we see here is a different ball game. A ball game played on this artificial surface. That ball was playable on regular, regular grass, but here seemed to take uh, take off a lot. It's just a different ball game playing on this thing. Here's Sarone with Sauter home on. Nobody out. Strike one. Sarone homered in the second. Slide to right field as Wathen went deep into the corner to make the catch in the fourth. And again, Rene Martin is up in the Royals bullpen. Sauter home at first. Down low. Gore will try to make Sarone hit the ball on the ground and rely on his good infield. Rainey Martin has been up and down like a yo yo out there in the Royals bullpen.
Two balls and one strike. Appeared in the second inning that Gora hung a curveball to Saron. Pitch was up and Saron hit it into the left field seats. Royals add a left hander to the bullpen. Nice play by Brett, and they've got one safe at first. Excellent play by George Brett. Great play by Brett. That could be the play of the ball game defensively right there for the Royals. And here is again another breaking ball. It's her own uh, beach down the third baseline. Brett backhanding here. He fires that ball to Frank White. They almost made two. There's Soderholm uh, trying to roll Frank White. And Sloan beats the relay back to first base. And here it is again. Soderholm going to the bag and just rolling a little bit on White. And flips him, but White got the throw away. Well, there's an out with a runner at first, and the batter will be Luke Panella, who has homered and walked. Rainey Martin has been joined in the Royal bullpen by Ken Brett. Down low, had the plate downstairs. Canella drove his home run into the left field seats following Cerrone's homer in the second. In the fourth, Panella walked. Ball and a strike. Yankees have had at least a base runner every inning, a hit in every inning except for the fourth. And they've got to hurry and get a run, Frank, to get within one late innings. I think it's very important to go late innings down a run rather than two if you're going to be down. Puts a lot of added pressure on the Royals. I tell you, that play a moment ago by George Brett took a lot of pressure off the Royals. Foul ball. Wrong back to first. One and two count on Vanilla. See that tear in Vanilla's left pants leg around the knee where he hit the deck in left field, making a catch earlier in the game. Foul to the right side. Vanilla believes the momentum the Yankees had coming down the stretch would help them in the playoff series. By the same token, he would feel that the Royals, having wrapped up the Western Division so early, would be hurt a bit in the series. Vanilla cited the fact that the 1976, it was really a struggle for the Yankees after they won their division early. 77, it was tough, but 78, when they had to play the Red Sox in a playoff game, they took three out of four from Kansas City. Two balls, two strikes. There again, that little strip of sunshine across home plate. Struck him out. that pitch again see if it doesn't look like it's low and in it is well out of the strike zone low and inside on Pinella he cut a slider sort of uh, like Gidry's uh, slider only not quite as fast ball well, looks like a strike ball of a sudden uh, dips down and in on right handers down and away from left handers you talk about cutting the slider it's the way he releases the ball is that it just like a pass like a quarterback throws a pass only you bring the hand down the ball will go down and in for you it's like you're pulling down a window shade. Well, sort of. More like a 
somebody throwing a pass right down in the ground rather than trying to throw it for distance. Rodriguez bounces the first pitch to Washington, and that retires the Yankees. No runs, a base, and a man left, and now in the middle of the sixth, it's still Kansas City four and the Yankees two. Right through the very heart of it. That these people are just starved. Now, they've been in the playoffs three times before, and the Yankees have won it three times before. I tell you, Bill White, they have some great, great sports fans. And right now, this time of year, great baseball fans here in Kansas City. Got out of their way to promote their ball club. Right now, they are dancing in the aisles to the organist. We'll be going to the bottom half of inning number six. Daryl Porter. Got a ball to left field that Penella made a great catch on coming in toward the infield. A diving catch of the ball, really. That's when Penella hurt the left knee. Second time up, Porter grounded out to second base. Jim Frag studied long and hard before he decided Porter would catch this first game. He was leaning toward John Wathan. Strike one. Bucky Dent. Plenty of time and throws him out. One away. Has been an errorless ball Frank game. White. Frank White. Two for two, a double, a single, two runs batted in, and a stolen base. White tied the ball game up with a little looper into left field that Vanilla could not get to. Dent did not get to the ball, dropped in for a two base hit, and drove in the tying runs in the second. Ron Davis came into the ball game after Gidry had pitched the first three. All four runs charged to Gidry. On the left side, Rodriguez in toward the mound and makes the catch. The left fielder, Willie Wilson. Make his way at third base tomorrow night to Greg Huddles with a right hander due to pitch for Kansas City. Willie Wilson has been kept off the base, grounded out twice, and struck out. But the Royals lead four to two. Ball one. Rodriguez made an excellent play on Wilson back in the second inning. Powell back off Cerrone's mask. One ball, one strike. I tell you, this gentleman has made himself into quite a ball player. As a rookie, he had all the raw talent, the great speed, but now he's a player. Knows what to do with all that talent. Two balls, two strikes. Davis, since coming into the game, has allowed two hits. Walked one, struck out two. Foul ball was just over the Yankee dugout. They're counting heads back there in the stands. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The Royals lead four to two here in the sixth inning. 184 singles for Wilson during the season. An American League record. Only the second man in baseball history to get 100 hits, both left-handed and right-handed, in the same season. Louis Tiot. Quick shot of Tiot scheduled to pitch game number four. Half 
past the mound. Randolph's got it, and he is out at first base. Excellent play by Willie Randolph. An off-balance throw to get the speedy Willie Wilson in a very, very close play. The way through the ball game here in Kansas City, and the Royals lead the Yankees by a score four to two. The Royals have four runs on seven base hits. They have played airless baseball, and the Yankees two runs on seven base hits have also played airless baseball. And here in the seventh inning, the Yankees will have Bobby Brown, Willie Randolph, and Bucky Dent up against Larry Cora, who seems to have gotten through his bad innings and now has a four to two lead. Yankees got their two runs in the second inning back to back home runs by Rick Cerrone and Lou Pinella. The Royals tied it in the bottom half of the second inning. A, a looping double by Frank White scoring Otis and Waffen. And uh, then they went ahead with two more in the bottom half the third. Willie Mays Aikens driving in uh, two runs. Here's Bobby Brown 0 for 2 against Gura. Brown has bounced to second, fly to center field. And Gura is low, ball one. I still feel, Bill White, that there's going to be an explosion. One of these last three innings. Hey, Yankees. Yankee wives. Sally John in the middle there. Bottom of strike on Brown. Well, they've got Dan Quisenberry throwing in the bullpen. I think one of the keys, Scooter, they've got to make the Royals use him as much as possible. Here's right. Quisenberry. Little underarm thrower. And to right, and Waffen got the glasses down, backing up. One away. John Waffen making the catch. We might see in late innings another right fielder out there. It doesn't look like he gets a jump, but he sure goes and gets that ball. Made a great catch on the one Cerrone hit to deep right field, too. I think he's got speed. He takes those long strides, and it doesn't look like he's getting there, but he's eating up a lot of ground. Uh -huh. Well, he off the batter. He doubled in the first inning, popped to shortstop in the second, struck out in the fifth. Well, he's one for three. Yankees left Randolph stranded at third base in the first inning. And Gura misses. Yankees had uh, shots through the first three innings to put Gura away. Did not do it. He has settled down a bit now. Although the Yankees have left at least one man on through the first six. Six. It's one and one. In fact, they've left a man on in each of the first six innings. Royals, for the first time, did not leave anybody on. Bottom of the sixth. So both teams have left some men on base. A one and two on Randolph. Larry Gura, seven and one lifetime against the Yankees. He's got a one ball, two strike count on Willie Randolph with one out and nobody on in the seventh inning. Royals ahead, 4 2. 2 and 2. Yankees won 103 games this year. Kansas City won 97. The only other team in baseball with 100 wins, the Baltimore Orioles. They ended up three games behind the Yankees. Three and two on Randolph. Here's George Toma, who Luke. is in charge yeah, of the ground crew here. Please. Toma gets as much ink as the players. Yeah. Popped up, shallow left center. Amos Otis calling. He's a center fielder. Fights the sun for out number two. I guess both teams will be glad to play tomorrow night. They won't have to fight the sun. Yeah, they play so seldom in the daytime here. Been a lot of problems, especially in the outfield on those fly balls. Bucky Dent the batter. He singled his last time up. Fly to center field in the third, sacrificed in the first. Dent is one for two in the ball game.
Hey, the big crowd here. It's a new record, isn't it? Yes, it is. In Kansas City. Mm -hmm. As Dent takes a strike. Burris has been getting the first pitch over. That allows him a lot of leeway. He can play around with the second pitch. As we look at Dick Hauser. Base hit. White couldn't get to it. White slipped as he went for the ball, and Otis will have to play it in. Bucky Dent picks up his second base hit, and the Yankees eighth the off baseman, Bob Watson. Well, you got to hit Larry. He's going to keep that ball away, go that way, and yeah. Dent went with him. Now here's Watson. Bob had a chance to drive in a run in the first inning. He had to Randolph at third base, and only one out, but he bounced right to Brett, who held Randolph and threw Watson out. Then Bob doubled the right field in the third, fly to center field in the fifth. Watson with 13 home runs this year and 68 runs batted in. They're two outs. And once again, Gura keeps the ball away from uh, the Yankee batters. This time, Bob Watson. And Jackson's on deck. Base hit right field. And Dent will go to third. Waffen hurries that ball into second base and keeps Watson at first base. So Yankee runners at first and third. There are two outs, and the batter's Reggie Jackson. Well, we'll see if Mr. October's we look at this again. And as Bill told you, Gura pitches that way, and normally. Watson goes the opposite field. He did that well. It's a good play by Watson holding it to a long single. Well, Jim going, have going on. Do you yeah. think he'd take the left hander off pitching to Jackson? No. Quisenberry? No. I don't think so. Uh, actually, Gura has handled Jackson very well all three times, striking him out the last time on a 3 2 curveball that Reggie took. But. We know Reggie, how he can rise to the occasion. Well, this is an occasion. Well, it really is. This is a happening. <laughs> Looking at Quisenberry still throwing out there. You see Ted Abernathy, the, the last fellow I remember throwing like this underhanded? Oh, yes, I saw him many times. Yeah. I haven't seen him lately. Me no, no, I mean, did you, yeah, did you oh, see him? Oh, yes, pitch? yes. Of course, he was with the old Washington Senator, yeah. wasn't he? You ever bat against him? No, oh, he's 57. Uh, no, I didn't bat against that. That is the man of the moment. George Steinbrenner looking on. The Yankees have runners at first and third. There are two outs here in the seventh inning. And Kansas City leads four to two. And Gura misses outside. Jackson is fouled out. He is bounced out and struck Very out. Wild. The home runs hit by Cerrone and Pinello. The first home runs given up by Gura to the Yankees this year. As we look at Dent at third. Watson at first. The one and one. Burr has pitched Jackson beautifully. He knows Reggie wants to pull the ball. And Reggie's trying to pull that outside pitch. And he goes to left field. He's got enough power to hit it over that left field fence. Wills, look at how shallow. Willie well, Wilson. if he could get a tweener toward left field, two runs was, well, I don't know. Watson, I don't think he would score from first. He, not that quick. One ball and two strikes on Jackson. Larry Gura trying to pitch his way out of trouble here in the seventh inning. There's Dennett third. Watson at first base. Two outs. One ball and two strikes on Reggie Jackson. They're going to keep the ball away. Frank White will play at the first base and second. Yankees no runs on two base hits and the two men left on base. We're going to the bottom half the seventh. Kansas City four, the Yankees two. New York. If I can. All right, part of the record-setting crowd for Kansas City. And 
The Yankees trailing 4-2 to two go into the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll be UL Washington, George Brett, and Hal McRae. Ron Guidry started this ball game, but it definitely was not Guidry's day. He's not real sharp. Ron only went three innings, which he gave up five hits, walked four, and the walks hurt him. Matter of fact, two of the many walks scored. Struck out only two and was charged with all four runs. Davis has done a good job holding the Royals in tow. And should the Yankees come back, then they got the goose out in the bullpen. All right, William. UL Washington will lead off against Ron Davis here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. UL has bounced out. He's walked and singled. He's one for two. Said he's got under his eyes. I don't know. Besides that toothpick in his mouth, <laughs> he's got to take a guy half hour to dress now. Yeah. And a strike from Davis. Ron's been in there since the fourth inning. And as Phil mentioned, he has done an excellent job. He's given up no runs on just two hits, both singles. Two strikes on Washington. Got out of trouble in the fourth inning when he got George Brett to bounce into a twin killing. Close play at first base. But they got Brett. One and two. Yankees have outhit the Royals nine to seven, but the Royals have outscored the Yankees four runs to two, and it's getting late. We're in the bottom half of seventh here at Royal Stadium. That's a foul ball. Oh, that's close. Bill Haller right on the line. Had the best view of it. And Gordon McKenzie, the third base umpire, did not argue. I think I might have. You think so? Yep. Oh, the count still one ball and two strikes on you all, Washington. Of course, they've got enough umpires to see everything. That nothing should be able to go on the ballpark they can't see. They've got six of them. Got the head of American League umpires, Dick Butler, in the seats. So they've got everything covered. You know who's here, Bill White? I oh. don't know whether you know him, but Joe Cronin. Sure, he's down sitting with uh, Lee McPhail. Oh, uh, I saw him outside uh, our television booth a little while ago. When I played against Joe when he was managing and playing shortstop for the Red Sox, and uh, then he managed for the Red Sox later on and didn't play. And I played a lot of golf with him, and he looks great. Didn't he also play with the Washington? Oh, Senators? yes, that's who he started with. Yep. You talk about a hitting shortstop. Oh, he was one of the best. Just telling, uh, we're talking to Frank Messer and mentioning that you'd really like to see, I would have liked to have seen some of the old timers play. Oh, they were great. Two and two on Washington. I mentioned the Ruth, Gary. You never got to see them, huh? Nope. Oh, man, you missed something. I think I stopped around Joe D's time. Great uh -huh. player. Uh -huh. Saw Joe near the end of his career. Got him. Got him looking. Fastball just lifted the outside corner on the knees. Washington a strikeout victim. That's the third strike out for Ron Davis, and here's George Brett. Brett has doubled, walked, and scored Ron into a double play. He's one for two. And takes a strike. 
to watch him swing the bat, Phil. It doesn't look like he has that zip in the bat that he had before he suffered that uh, broken hand. No, it really doesn't. Ooh, that, that's the best cut he's had right there. Fouled it off to left. Came out before the ball game and uh, had extra hitting. He hit extra early. We came out early, and then he also hit with the regular. So uh -huh. he evidently is having a bit of trouble with his timing. Hit 390 on the year, George Brett. Waste pitch outside, one and two. Yeah, that's a pretty good sign. President Brett declares war on the Yankees. He hit that one well. And that ball is gone. Well, he said he wasn't swinging the bat well, but he got the ball out of the plate and drilled it into the over the wall and deep left center field. And the Royals now lead 5-2. The extra batting practice really paid off. Looked like he was swinging the bat. Look at that. You can't blame him. Deep left center. We'll look at it again. Boy, perfect stride. Kept his eye right on the ball and back on that beautiful grassy turf back there near the Yankee insignia and the Royals. Right on the hill. They're trying to get out of the trying to get Brett out of the dugout to uh, take the ball. Here he comes. What a year. Royals now lead it by three. And Hal McRae's a batter. He's giving Brett a lot of time to enjoy that home run. Uh-oh, somebody threw an apple from the upper deck. <laughs> Steve Palermo says get over here some of the ground crew and clean that up. Well he's told him don't do it anymore. Please. That's uh, you can get hurt. Something thrown that far. Here's McCray. 0 for 3. Strike one. McCray struck out his last two times up. You don't usually see that at this ballpark. They had a lot of problems out in uh, Dodger Stadium. In the I think final it's game. Getting to be contagious. Yeah. Fans are reacting. Dodgers used to like to brag they had the best fans in the world. Yeah. No balls, two strikes on McCray. Royals leading 5-2, bottom half the seventh inning. That home run by Brett, the eighth base hit for the Royals. The uh, third off Ron Davis. The first off Davis since back in the fourth inning. One and two on McCray. Oh. And McCray is hit by a it's a breaking ball. He'll go to first base. Ball slipped right out of Davis's hands as Bill said he tried to throw the breaking pitch. Watch this. Okay. Yeah, if you're going to get hit, that's the kind of pitch to get hit with—a breaking ball. So McRae takes his time going to first base. There is one away, and Amos Otis is a batter. He's two for three. He scored twice, and he's stolen the base. So he's had a pretty good afternoon. There's Brett. Davis to keep an eye on McRae. Ball one on Otis. Want to get some action in the Yankee bullpen. Got it picked up. And Bucky Dent puts a tag on McRae. Well, the Royals really gambling on the base pass. Eh? They just figured you're not going to throw that ball there and start running. Well, they're 500 on the day. They've had two stolen bases and two men picked off first. This was very close. Tough play for Watson so he doesn't hit the run. It's got to be a quick tag by Bucky. Well, they're 
with two outs now. The count one and a one Otis. Right to Randolph at second. That'll retire the side. Kansas City picks up another run on the home run by George Brenton. And at the end of seven, the Royals lead the Yankees five to two. Well, you see the little cleanup truck down there. Trying to get up the debris of that apple that was thrown down. And George Brett got a standing ovation when he went out to third base. As we get ready for the top of the eighth inning, and the Yankees need three to tie, Bill. All right, Bill, we'll have Eric Sauter home, Rick uh, Cerrone, and then Louis Pinella do up against Larry Gura. Gura's had a eight right hand batters in this ball game. Just the one left hander Jackson. He's handled Jackson perfectly 0 for 4 today. So Soderholm, who is one for three, leads off. The Yankees have left at least one man on through the first seven. And they have stranded to eight overall. Tomorrow, Denny Leonard scheduled for Kansas City. Rudy May for the Yankees. Game time, 8 o'clock. Game two of this 1980 American League Championship Series. Then the teams will fly into New York and they'll play there on Friday night. Tommy John scheduled for the Yankees. Possibility of Paul Splittor for Kansas City. Soderholm takes inside ball one. We're at the top of the eighth, Royals leading by three. And one and one. center Wapkin over there the right fielder and there's one away and here's Cerrone Rick Cerrone hit a home run in the second inning with nobody on then fly to right field in the fourth inning and forced a runner in the sixth inning Got a play, strike one. Brett made a good play on Cerrone's uh, bouncer just over the bag at third base in the sixth inning. Got it to second base just ahead of Soderholm. Side corner, one and two. Sharon played 147 games this year for the Yankees. More than any other Yankee. In the left, this should be easy for Willie Wilson. Two out. Lewis one for two. We told earlier, Phil, that uh, Cerrone and Pinella hitting back-to-back -back home runs. That, uh, that that was the first time it had happened, but I understand it wasn't the first time. Uh-huh. Somebody Who'd... did it in the National League. 
Johnny Pitch, one of them. Probably so a Forster invention. Huh? I don't know. I didn't get the second name, but just the first time in the American League Championship Series that that's happened. Jim Fry watching the action. He's got a three-run lead. And it was Foster. Foster and Bench. One and one. You know, Bench wants to play a position other than catch. Yeah, and the Reds aren't too happy with that. Nope. He wants to catch maybe once or twice a week and play maybe first base or the outfield the other uh, four or five uh -huh. days a week. Back up the middle. Washington, the shortstop. And Cardinals up. Out number three in the eighth inning. Put out six three. That means they have to sign. And then they're seven and a half to score. Royals five, Yankees two. New York, New York. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. Ron Davis pitched four strong innings. The one home run he gave up to George Brett, the only run scored off him. He allowed three hits, walked one, struck out three, and allowed the one run. So Tommy Underwood will come on. Pitch to Wathen, Akins, and Porter. Two of the three of them left-hand batters. And then the Yankees have the ninth, whether they'll uh, use pinch hitters or not. Rodriguez is scheduled a lead off for the Yankees, then Brown and Randolph. All right, William. Well, John Wathen uh, leads off against Tommy Underwood. Wathen has walked all three times he's been up with an intentional pass coming in the third inning. He has scored a run. The Royals have five runs on eight base hits, including a home run by George Brett. The Yankees have two runs on nine base hits so both those Yankee runs coming on home run solo shots by Rick Cerrone and Lou Pinella back to back in the second inning. Ball one to Wathen. Talked about the big crowd a new Kansas City record forty two thousand five hundred and ninety eight fans here watching this baseball game. One and one. This is Greg. Greg Nettles. Yeah. Uh -huh. Greg's schedule to start tomorrow's game. One and two, that's fouled off third. Tommy Underwood. With Rudy May starting, Underwood uh, shunned into the bullpen as we look at uh, Charlie Lau. He's given credit for George Brett's hitting. Two and two. Uh, worked with Brett and with Al McCray while he was here. Out of play. What got Lau in trouble here? He was working with Hurdle, and Whitey Herzog didn't like the way he was working with her. Yeah, that's and goal, and of course, uh, Yankees picked him up, and he's done an excellent job with Cerrone. Still two and two on Wathen. There's that hot air balloon I was flying before. He got him, went too far. Wathen goes down on strikes. He tried to check it, good. So Underwood comes on, strikes out Wathen. We'll be watching again. Willie really broke down and in. Underwood now will pitch to Willie Akins, who has struck out, singled in two runs, and bounced back to the mound. That's fouled off first. I tell you, he's swinging the bat a lot better than he did early in the year when he first joined the Royals. He's making better contact. He yeah. always he always gets his rips. He uh -huh. doesn't get cheated. 
Hit 20 home runs this year for Kansas City and drove in 98 runs. And it's one and one on Akins. Is that the Royal mascot? I don't know. I'm going to say, what does a Royal look like? What is a Royal? Commodore, they got the Royal Commodore. Or yeah. Something here. The Royals are both. <laughs> two and two. Right back to Underwood. Two outs. Tommy has fooled the first two hitters. Well, he came sidearm then. Yeah. Yeah. Off and do that. Daryl Porter's been held hitless. He's flying out, bounced out twice, 0 for 3. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Royals lead 5 2 over the Yankees. As Porter takes a breaking ball for strike. Here's that pitch again. And it's one and one. Two and one. That's a Roy. <laughs> Same as Otis's buddy. <laughs> Out of play, two balls, two strikes on Porter. Two outs, nobody on here in the eighth inning. Royals lead 5 2. And Underwood wants a new baseball. Report the fan accommodation room, please. Porter playing his option out here. I think over the next couple of years, the Royals are going to have some problems. Yeah, I think so. Especially with the money they gave Brett. Lucky done it short, plays the big hop. And in the dirt, nope, and off the ground of Watson. You almost see that he was going to have trouble. That ball slid on Watson. Lucky turned it loose. He turned it over. And you can see that ball was going to slide a bit. And, uh, I think Bob should have caught the ball. Yeah, I don't think it hit the ground, but you're right. It was like a sinker or a screwball that Bucky threw. And uh, they're going to give Watson the air. Here it is again. Yep. So on at first base is Daryl Porter. There are two outs, and here's Frank White. Double in two runs, single, and he's also popped up. He's two for three. Change up. Swung through. Strike one. There's Porter. Not a threat to steal. We're also dealing, Scooter, maybe with that uh, stretch of sun stretching across the infield. Maybe Watson lost that ball. Strike two, then throwing out of the sun, possibly across to Bob Watson. Boy, two beautiful change-ups in a row that Underwood has thrown to Frank White. One and two. There's Porter. We mentioned he is not a threat to steal, although he might try to surprise you if you don't pay attention to him. And he got a piece of it, fouled off. A lot of baseball people around here. Ken Boyer, who used to manage the, uh, the Cardinals, he's here. Jack McCain, the general manager of San Diego, is here. He told me that Jerry Coleman aged 10 years in this 
one and only year of managing. Hmm. Be careful, Scooter. Yeah. Drill the left, base hit. And Pinella plays it in and holding the second base is Darryl Porter. Frank White picks up his third base into the ball game. He's got two singles and a double and two runs batted in. And here's Willie Wilson. Wilson 0 for 4. Hasn't gotten the ball out of the infield yet. Bounce to second twice, third once, and struck out. Runners at first and second, two outs. And Underwood is low, ball one. One and one. Wilson got 230 hits this year. Imagine being up 705 times. Oh, wow. 705 times? Yeah. They don't believe in walking him, do they? No. Bobby Brown got a late jump, and he will not get the ball. Two runs will score. Wilson is going to hold at second base. Two base hit for Willie Wilson, and the Royals now lead 7-2. the error very costly here we look at it again and Bobby Brown has started in a little bit now tries to go back but no chance now well he's looking up into that sun as he started in had a hard time picking that ball up then decided to play it off the wall Yankee outfield has not done a good job here in this first game no no way Vanilla made a, an excellent catch early but since then, balls have fallen out there. Here's UL Washington. And he takes low, ball one. Washington, one for three. Big two out double by Willie Wilson. And the right, that's going to slice foul. That'll be in the seats first row. And comes out as some fan misses a catch. There's Wilson. One ball and two strikes on Washington. See the Yankee bench. They're a little upset now and down. They're down by five runs. And we're in the eighth inning. Struck him out. Saron will play at the first base. And the side is retired. Strike got put out. Two, three. Two runs. Two hits. One air. One man left. At the end of eight, Royals seven, Yankees two. New York, New York. I want to win. And Clint Hurdle has moved out to right field in place of John Wathen. Looks like Rodriguez will bat, so there'll be no pinch hitters here. Rodriguez is a double to show for three trips to the plate against Girl. And Girl gets the first pitch in. He's been ahead of the Yankees ever since the fourth inning. He normally is around the plate with that first pitch. And as we mentioned, that allows him a lot of leeway. He can nibble, and he's done that well. 
And he misses outside. One ball, one strike. get a rally going but you're right they just try to hit that ball Rodriguez went after a high fastball there broken bat pop-up and the third baseman Brett is calling one away <laughs> we've got some fans who think they've got it made others sitting on their hands are not sure yet they're leading by five. Kansas City with one out and nobody on in the ninth inning. And this is Bobby Brown who's over three. Brown has bounced out and flied out twice. And Gura's in there with that first pitch again. Strike one. Of course, late innings, you got to take that first pitch. You got to try to get on base. And two strikes on Bobby Brown. So far, as we look at Willie Randolph, it's been all Kansas City since the second inning. They're leading by a score seven to two. And Brown goes down on strike. Turn that ball over. And down away from Brown. Second baseman, Willie Randolph. Fourth strike out for Larry Gurra, and it's up to Willie Randolph, who is one for four. And the Royal fans now all standing. Randolph rips one to center field. That'll sit him down. And he'll hold it first as Otis gets the ball back in. Well, Willie figured he's been getting that first pitch over to get ahead of the batter, and he jumped right on it. His second base hit. Here's Bucky Dent. Bucky is two for three against Gurr. Well, Dan Quisenberry throwing again. He's been up the last three innings throwing in the Royal bullpen. So at least the Yankees have made him throw the ball a little, a little bit. And how about that Martin? He was up for five innings. Gurr misses outside ball one. Randolph at first base, two outs. Don't let him go to second should he want to. He decides not to as there is low, two balls, no strikes. Larry Gura has not won a ball game since August 25th. He was 18 and 4 at that time. Ended up 18 and 10. And it's three balls, no strikes on Dent. Looking for a sign. I don't think he got one. He'll probably leave it up to him. Wouldn't hurt take another pitch though. And he is taking it. Three and two. He's taking Burrow all the way. And once again now, Royal fans get up. Not as many this time. Well, now they're all good. Popped up, that might do it. Darrell Porter, the catcher, calling in foul territory, and the ball game is over. And the Yankees in the night, no runs a base, hit a man left. Final score: the Royals win the first game of this 1980 American League Championship Series.